So here, this morning is our chance really to open up the areas of concern, of confusion, and we have wonderful people here who can help us to um, arrive at some kind of reflection. So uh, once again, uh, we have Father Charles Sim, a uh, Jesuit from Singapore, who you heard yesterday, uh, giving us some very, very helpful frameworks and uh, insights. Then of course you know your own bishop, uh, John Lee, our bishop. He is an old friend because when I joined the Office of Laity and Family um, and Women's Desk, which is also my responsibility, he was already a bishop member of the office. And he served, I think, six years, is it? Six. six years as a bishop member of the FABC Office of Laity and Family. So we worked together for part of that time. So this is also uh, a chance to you know, say why he was so open and willing to host this meeting here in uh, Sinchu Diocese and the Taoyuan. Thank you. Then we have um, Antonio Huang, uh, who is privileged to be married to Angela Chen, uh, Mr. and Mrs. So there's Antonio and Angela, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves now. So I think we will begin at that end of and just pass the microphone. I need some uh, note, <laughs> otherwise I speak too long. Uh, my name is Antonio. Uh, I grew up in Macau, but uh, I, I came to Taiwan 30 years ago, so I'm a Taiwanese now. Uh, I got married for 28 years, and I have three children. Now, Angela and I, uh, we uh, received baptism in Taiwan. So uh, after we married, we, we joined uh, the CLC group, and then we get a very good supporting group. Uh, CLC is a Christian life community. So uh, I, want to, I want to point out is uh, for a family, a new family, uh, a supporting team, uh, from community, from churches, is very important. So uh, now we join a lot of different communities, but I would like to share is that we have a target for family uh, ministry. Uh, as a, we want to be, to be a couple as a couple in love, to be a couple as a parents, how to educate our children or as a model in the family, to be a couple as a player, because we need God to help us. So I only focus in these three issues in our family ministry at the meantime. Uh, this is a very brief. I'm Angela, spouse of An Antonio. <laughs> um, same, uh, same as uh, we have married for 28 years. Uh, I'm a teacher, I'm a counselor, I'm um, a wife, I'm a mother, so that's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm Zhang Li from this diocese. And 2011, we have a pastoral convention. And after that, uh, uh, we our immigrant and the migrant center, uh, starting later migrant families, join the each parish. So these serves were from the migrant center transformed to the parish. So later local church were aware the migrant is part of them, and. Uh, we will try to start a small Christian community. But what kind of form? Uh, so we will search. Then we discover uh, when the, the parish priest uh, welcome the disciples uh, class or like that program. Uh, that will help every uh, faithful, starting, interesting, read the Bible, 
and uh, touch by the word of God and the sharing with others. So that's kind training starting uh, three years ago and now Little Bit Fruits is they starting the past work is Mu uh, Dao Ban Catechist. So each parish they were take care of the evangelization like that. So really follow the Pope uh, vision is we need going out and we need a company with the people. But certainly we need to form ourselves first. We need to encounter with Jesus, each of us. He will teach us how to preach, how to sharing. So the parish no longer is a church, uh, the st structure, rather is a community. This community, each person is alive and uh, want, like uh, today, Father say, love is care others, for others, with others. So let us uh, continue to do that. Thank you, Bishop. A very good morning to all of you again. I was, I mean, I'm here today because Wendy asked me to be here. He says, come and share. I said, okay. I listened to her and I'm here today, this morning. Two things I'd like to share with you. First is, uh, in 2001, I was ordained as a priest in Singapore on the Feast of the Holy Family. And for some of you may know, the Feast of the Holy Family is on the 29th of December, end of the year. So I was very privileged then, I chose that date. And the reason? is because I've received a lot from my family, from my parents, especially my father. He's a very prayerful man. He prays more than me, three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. And he says his rosary every day. I don't know how many times. So I think what I, who am, I am today is because of it. And my sister is also a religious nun, a Kenosian, my older sister. I think it's because of his prayers that I'm here today. And I hope that with fathers like him, more children will join the priesthood religious life or a good married life, bringing up their family. So I'm very heartened to see all of you here this morning. And here I have the privilege of looking at the back with a beautiful depiction of people from different countries. You have the Chinese, you have Japanese, you have Korean and Mongolian. And of course, we have others and Jesus Christ welcoming the whole family. So I'm just thinking as a family here this morning, what can we do together? What can we do together as a family to promote good family life, good couple life, the good upbringing of children in the faith? Alone, I can do nothing. But with all of you together as a group, putting our heads together, thinking together, we can change the world. And we can change family for the better. And I and we cannot do alone. We need to work together. So this morning I'm thinking, how can we, as a collective body, as members of the FABC family, as well as a laity, how can we work towards the goal that Christ has for each one of us? Families, healthy families, faith-based family. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. So I'll just introduce myself. I realize I have never done it until now. <laughs> Uh, yes, my name is Wendy Louie, the S is not pronounced, and uh, I'm born and brought up in Singapore, but my parents came from India, and uh, they came young, they married in Singapore, and all their children were born in Singapore. I'm the fifth of six uh, children. I'm not married myself, but I live the vocation of Auxiliary of the Apostolate, which is also, I think, existing in Taiwan. As, as far as I know, is definitely in Hong Kong and uh, many in Korea and some in Japan uh, also, none in uh, Macau as far as I know. So it is a diocesan vocation and I have worked in my diocese for nearly 30 years uh, before I retired uh, two years ago. 
And I continued then with the FABC work. For the last eight years, I've been with the Office of Laity, Family, and Women's Desk. And uh, in the end of April, I had the chance to be at the International Forum for Catholic Action in Rome. And there the Holy Father invited the Catholic Action groups. And we were in this relatively small synod hall, 300 people, um, sitting with the Holy Father. He's about where Hisami is sitting there, that distance from me, for about two hours. It was magical, beautiful, but he was very challenging. And the main point he ended on and repeated was, can we reach out to the young, because now the Synod on Youth is also on his mind, to the young who are unemployed especially, a bit lost, confused, and help them to encounter the elderly and try to facilitate a dialogue with the elderly. So I have a question also for all of our panelists and any of you. Uh, what are some of the creative ways, because Holy Father is inviting us to be very creative in our approach to family ministry, not to be stuck in a rut of any one program or one movement. However good it is, it is limited by its nature. So how can we open the horizon of family ministry, be more creative in the ways that we uh, are doing these things these days? Maybe you'd like to respond to that. We are called family of family. How can this happen? Yesterday when I drive home, I have an idea, maybe for the young couple. I mean, if, if, we, if we know when we receive a baptism, we have a godfather or godmother. But why we don't have a, a company couple to be accompanied with the young couple because they have no experience about family? It's not a program, but a long time company. This is a, a very fresh idea Just I just got last night. I think um, what I got from these days is uh, marriage is a very experiment process of true love. It's very experimental because each couple are unique. They have their ways of life from the family of original, but they have to create their words or their, their version, their version of conjugal, uh, conjugal love. And they are companion with Christ, just like the picture of uh, Emil. When, 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 the, when Christ is come near to the tomb, man, the way uh, to Emmanuel. They, we are walking with Christ in my, our marriage. That's what I feel from this 30, the almost 30 years with Antonio. When I was reading philosophy in the Philippines, Ateneo de Manila, uh, we had an old Jesuit professor, Father Thomas Green, and uh, he was also a spiritual writer, Thomas Green, who wrote Wheat Among the Wheats. Yeah. And he mentioned that he was my professor for philosophy of uh, science. He mentioned that to change the mindset or to have a new paradigm, the old generation have to pass. It's only the new generations that will think of something creative. So I'm not too sure, looking around here, whether the new generations have to come in before we have something creative or not. But I believe creativity is in each one of us. Creativity can come about only if we place time and energy to think about a certain thing long enough. So that, like Newton's, you know, 
he thought of gravi uh, gravity, how you know, an apple falls to the ground long enough before you know, he thought of uh, this, uh, the whole idea of gravity. So I think it's the same. If you give enough thought, energy and time to think about certain things long enough, something creative will come forward. So I think we need to really spend time and we cannot do it alone. Perhaps we have to do it together. How can we reach out to youth? How can we reach out to the elderly? I think we need to make that connection. And the connection has to come from all of us. Thanks. Now, do you have any questions you'd like to put to the panel? Or suggestions you'd like to make to them? Sister Mary Beth? Just see who you are asking if it's someone particular. I would address this question to either Father Charles or Angela and Antonio. I'm wondering if my perception is accurate that young couples today are hesitant to be married because they're afraid. Is that an accurate assumption on my part? Could be from the issues that we discussed already, the secularization, the high cost of raising a child, lack of commitment, but I don't know if there's any one of those that would be more predominant. The reason I'm asking is that when we're um, forming the youth, educating them, what um, focus should we take so that we can help them, that they won't uh, be stuck there with that fear, that we can tran trans help transform their vision and um, accept the beautiful gift that marriage is, that God has in mind for them. So that is my question. As I mentioned, I have three targets. Couple as couple. The second one is a couple as parents. I think the children, for example, my boy and my daughter, they are training to get married in, with a try to get married in 28 because of his father or her father get married, got married in 28. It means children is learning from their parents. We cannot do the ch for other children. At least we can demo, you will not demo, you have guess <laughs> what is marriage. So couple itself, himself, themselves, is very important. As a parent, you have to show your children what is marriage, what is the family. So this is my target. So I focus back to the couple, try to, to let all the couple, as a couple, as a parents, also if it's Christian, as a player, it's perfect. Yes, they have the deep in anxiety to marry. Yes. And because they have faced many other uh, youth, they are reluctant to marry. So my boy told me uh, his aim to marry uh, at 28 uh, is very crucial because <laughs> they have no economic base as others they are mentioned but I, I truly encourage uh, nothing because they are really ready for the marriage because they have uh, uh, come along for uh, about eight years because they know in, at the, the university as a classmates so, but beforehand, we have, uh, have to face, they, uh, for example, both of my children, they have their uh, girlfriend and boyfriend from another religion. This is the Izu, mainly in Taiwan. So how can we, to show the love to God, to show the love of God, uh, in every moment, we come across their boyfriend and girlfriend. And how to show the joy of being married. And also show the weakness. We, we have our chorus, conflicts. It's not absent, really. <laughs> it's not absent in the family of Catholics. But we would, we would like to told our children what the conflicts are. 
were, and this come from the family of my origin, or come from of my emotion, or come from the different views of points of education or anything else. I will explain the conflict and after the conflict how to reunion. This is why the, they have the true mirror of a true marriage. We discover that um, we have a romantic uh, image of marriage, uh, even though in the Catholic Church. Uh, we have uh, studied three years in, this, um, in our uh, theology seminars in uh, Furen, we, and we come across, we are the only couples in the class with the religious or the priest. So they always ask us, are you so joyful with your marriage? I, I, I answer, no, of course not. <laughs> we just have the conflict in the morning, in the afternoon, or the evenings. Even in the class. Or even in the class. <laughs> <laughs> and after three years, they have known what this marriage is. So it's, it's, it's not, not a, a Pandora box. <laughs> It's not a Pandora box. We have to show the real mirror of marriage. That's why I come here. I'm not afraid because I'm not the model. I'm in process. My marriage is in process. I'm in conflict, but I have chance until my death. <laughs> Some of you may have heard this old song, and the lyrics goes like this. Fool rush in when angel feels to threats. So sometimes if you rush into marriage without thinking, without planning, without knowing the risk as well as the happiness and joy, you'll definitely get into trouble very soon. So as regards to Sister uh, Mary's uh, question, I say yes and no. Yes, of course. Every couple, the man or the woman will ask, especially the woman, will he be faithful to me? Not only now, but for the rest of my life. Will he cheat on me? Will he be kind to me? Will he take care of the children? Or will he leave me alone with the children? Many, many questions. And of course, the man will ask, will my wife remain as beautiful as she is today after 10 years or longer? So there are lots of questions, lots of questions joy, anxiety, mixed feelings, they say a back of uh, mixed feelings. So if you do not go into marriage with an open mind, with uh, a sense of, uh, um, with this sense of awareness that no, it's not going to be a bed of roses, then I think it's fine, it's good, it's great. But if you go into marriage not knowing anything and just because of the romantic love, because of what you watch, what you see from Hollywood, then you're in trouble. So. So at the end of the day, it's both a yes and a no. And I believe many young people, they want to get married. And it's a phenomenon. It's a given phenomenon that people do get married. Even no matter how you say, you know, wedding, marriage is so bad and so forth, they've seen divorce and, and many other you know, horrors of uh, married life. People are still rushing in to get married. And the question is, why? Because there's always the in innate desire of a human being to be united with the another person, to share one's life, as I say, they say, a soulmate. They are searching for their soulmate. So as a church, can we help this individual to find the soulmate of their life within the, our, our faith? To help them to understand that marriage is both a challenge and also a gift, as a sacrament is a gift. So can we help young people, young couples, strengthen their marital life. They need support, and especially within the, uh, uh, within the, the first five years of their married life. They need all the support, all the care, all the mentoring that they, they can find to help them grow in their marriage. So can we, as a community, support young couples? Uh, 
what I share may be far from your life, but uh, this real life in Taiwan and uh, everywhere is uh, when our diocese open one home for the orphans. Uh, now it's not really open uh, because their parents still alive, but they cannot support children because they are in the jail, they are drug dealer, and they cannot live by themselves either. So birth rate is go down, but this number of young people, it number is growing up. So this is our society and uh, how we can, even our parish is very limited, but the Pope asking us, we must go to the poor. When we go there, the really life, the challenge, is really become witness. It's not because we, we have, rather we just willing to be company with them. And Jesus has the strength to help them. So how can we organize this kind of groups to help those young people? In our diocese, have us so many organizations, but very hard to find the volunteers because really hurt. Because those people doesn't want you help them. So you the only way is company. Let them come. You just wait. One sister in the serve there and the sharing is lay like uh, it's not good explanation, but you can imagine the animal doesn't know you what they are doing. How can you close with them? Similar. If you close too quick, they will bite you. And But you need to stay there. Let them free, safe. Waiting, waiting until, because you have food here. Huh? <laughs> we have a <laughs> where coffee shop. Uh, food here, and <laughs> they will stay there waiting until they asking, want a cup of coffee, and we starting. And maybe uh, it also need to take time. Maybe he just want coffee and suddenly, like uh, get the food, running away. Huh? Very similar that kind of experience. You just wait, wait until them trust. Then we start. So take long time. Uh, but all the strength from the Lord. Anybody want to join us? <laughs> thank you for that question, Sister Mary Beth, and thank you for your sharing. Um, I think what uh, Bishop John Lee just shared is really a description of accompaniment and the kind of uh, ministry. When we speak of ministry, this is what it is uh, in a different form for different types of people, but uh, really that kind of accompaniment. No? And um, one of the things you mentioned, the couple, couples to be accompanied, uh, we just started in Singapore, training couples to accompany uh, from for two years, from before marriage until the end of the first year or second year of marriage. 
We are training couples in every parish to accompany um, to be married couples. Um, any more questions? Some very good, okay. Yeah, yes, Ingrid first and then uh, Roquel. I would like to respond uh, to the question of the uh, of Sis Mary. Uh, she asked uh, why uh, why do so many uh, young young people they they don't want to get married? Perhaps because they are afraid of uh, marriage. I think uh, they are not afraid of uh, living together, but the wedding. And event, uh, and perhaps uh, later the divorce is too uh, expensive and too complicated. And uh, I noticed that the wedding, the whole ceremony here, are getting uh, more expensive and more expensive, and more complicated and more complicated. And uh, they, they are. They are ready f uh, for living together, but uh, they are not uh, not sure uh, if they will stay together and if they are willing to have uh, children now. So uh, if, I, I don't know if uh, we can encourage them to, uh, to wait, to see if they are really want to stay together then perhaps uh, they will uh, consider the, a real marriage, I think. Thank you, uh, Your Lordship. Thank you for the last point that you brought up. And I believe most of the Catholic faithful are willing to respond. No? And, uh, Maybe I'd like to direct this question particularly to Father Charles, no? because uh, yesterday, Father Charles, you used the framework of uh, something like a triangle. No? Uh, the first one is the systemic and developmental perspective. The second one is the family and uh, marriage, marital spirituality. And the last one is training and formation. I think that those are very important. And I really particularly like the imagery you, you illustrated it with a triangle. The number one, which is systems and development, and then the training and formation as the base, and then the marital and uh, marriage uh, and family spirituality as the apex, you know, which I think would be the, uh, more or less maybe the laboratory or where those one and three are being lived out. I guess most of the movements in the parish, like Marriage Encounter, Focolare, Opus for Christ, and the other movements, would always want to synergize and contribute to the building of the small communities within the parishes. Uh, and I'm sure there will always be a sweet spot, if I may say, uh, uh, in the charism and maybe in the priorities of these movements. But I believe the institutional church or the local church would also have a, a big say, you know, especially when it enters into the diocesan and the parish priorities. And I think, as you were expounding, as Wendy was mentioning also, that in Singapore, it is basically the initiative of the local diocese or the, or the local parish. You know? And then everyone contributes their share. So I believe that that's a very important point in this meeting today, wherein, uh, wherein uh, the various movements, the various groups working within the parish, especially for the family, can really syn be synergized, but of course, the uh, the pastor you know, or the shepherd in the local church taking the initiative, and I'm sure uh, uh, many of us would just simply respond. You know? So that's probably my what I wanted to ask, Father Charles. The imagery or the analogy of the body, you know, the hand cannot do without the leg, the leg cannot do without the hand. We need a head to think, right? So we need to coordinate a different parts of our body for one purpose, and that is life. Right? So there may be, be many organizations, many movements within the parish, within the Catholic Church, 
but the question is how to coordinate so that the, left, the head, right hand will know what the left hand is doing and not the other way around, and the other way around also. Okay? The left hand will know what the right hand is doing. So the question is how do we coordinate? How do we synergize? How do we think as a body instead of we individual doing their own things? And of course, here we look at the shepherd of the church, the bishop, to give the direction. The bishop together with the priest and the laity to move the body forward. So the leadership has to come, yes, from the above, but also from below and within. Because the head doesn't have all the answers. As I mentioned earlier, when we talk about marital and family spirituality, we are looking at you, married couples, because you hold the key. You know what works and what did not work for you. And what is spirituality? It's our way of life, the way we do things, as a Catholic, as a Christian. So this is what I have to say. Thanks. I have a question for Agnes and Antonio. When you got married, you were trying to find a way to give direction and meaning not to your married love. What was the source that gave you that passion, if you like, to search? You see, this is what we need to give our families. The meaning they are searching for, we have to kind of stir it up. So what was at the source of that kind of, if it's too personal, never mind, but what was it that disturbed you enough or inspired you enough to really make this journey of searching and joining all these difficult programs and taking so much time, you know? Could you just share with us a little? Thanks, God. I'm the counselor. <laughs> because of my profession, I notice a lot of uh, questions that come from family. So when I dare to come to my marriage, I'm just have a one mindset on my mind. I have to cultivate my marriage. And thanks to all the Jesuit I know <laughs> in, in Taipei, um, we have lots of um, resources uh, to, to be accompanied as the spiritual director in my daily life. We, we joined the C, uh, CLC, the Christian Life uh, Community. So we have uh, weekly uh, groups together to share the life, not just religion, to share the life. So I'm trained to share all my life through Christ. So this is a, the main resource in my life. And then thanks to the angel, <laughs> they are one of the couples, they asked me us to join the marriage encounter when we came to uh, married after seven years. Um, because I have two children right after my marriage. I have the NFP, but it's fair. Uh, so we have two children just um, uh, now um, she is 26 and 24 so I have a very tough period to raising my children on my own because I'm fido single parent <laughs> fido because um, at the, that moment uh, Anthony and Anthony Antonio is very busy with his business all around the world <laughs> because he, he is a salesman of um, uh, computers. This is the booming economics uh, crisis in Taiwan at that moment. So I'm pseudo, pseudo um, single parent. <laughs> so I'm in crisis. I know in my heart I'm in crisis. So graciously, Hear my prayer. We join 
the weekend. And I highly respect that Antonio will have a positive um, feedback uh, according to my our plan, our, my plan. <laughs> but afterwards, they, they, it, it does help very. But afterward, I, I, I must say, not any program will help the marriage uh, except the couple needs to involve. Involve. So after the weekend, we are uh, we are asked to join their core team as the sharing couples. And there we have the mutual un uh, understanding group that lasts for 20 years. We are not reluctant to share our conjugal, uh, conjugal life in marriage. No secret in that group. But with the quality time with the Father uh, Mathis, uh, Mathis Christian SVD, he gave us the quality time uh, every month. He accompanied us with all our failure in life or in marriage that encourage us after three years we can get up and run another weekend, marriage encounter weekend. So that's the beginning of our marriage and that's res rescued my, my marriage life from then on. We are accompanied with a group, with a group, and there's a mutual understanding group. That's why we are safe. <laughs> we are safe. I'm ta not talking about program. I'm talking about a mutual understanding group. I need to leave, so I have to cooperate with uh, Angela in my family. <laughs> she, is a, she is a counselor. But of course, uh, God gives us a lot of uh, grace. Okay. Uh, I learned the relationship is very important. Even now, we, we build up relationship with God, with my wife. So relationship, I have to make a decision. What is the priority in my life? You have to make the decision as a man, as a husband, business or your family. So I always advise to my son, to my daughter, make the priority first. Of course, it's the family or your spouse. Thank you very much. Uh, Bishop, you want to add something? Uh, relationship is not only the couples. <laughs> Bishop and the priest. We must love each other. And uh, it's not duty. Uh, we are same body. Uh, I confess. Uh, <laughs> because before I offer so many energy to uh, write uh, Chinese with English uh, to send to the parish priest. And uh, ask the secretary must be not only sent and also make a phone call. But some parties still say they didn't know, and some uh, uh, some people say the other words is other. Uh, you know your parish priest receive your letter just throw the bone. <laughs> uh, so that's just make me more angry. But uh, during the prayer, I think something must be happen. One day I discovered one of my priests, he can speak very good Mandarin, but uh, he cannot read Mandarin. He cannot read English. This discover. I change my tongue. 
And uh, I through the other way to explain. Little by little, I find they changed. So I think we all know we for others, but just very simple knowledge about others is we need God enlightening us to know what's the really happened there. And that's why we need to pray, Eucharist. <laughs> Any other questions? Maybe Eric from Hong Kong can share. I, I, we know that they, they are doing well in family issues, in family ministry. I don't know. You can share some experience. Uh, uh, one, uh, yes, I guess the similar uh, ideas uh, from Bishop uh, that uh, many volunteers in brothers and sisters in church are very uh, eager to help others. For example, uh, three months before we would like to set up a hotline for the church in the church that uh, people uh, with family problems or marriage problems can contact us we are conduct the training and start the recruitment and we receive a very, very enthusiastic responses uh, from the brothers and sisters of uh, about 40 uh, uh, brothers and sisters apply for the hotline service. Um, and we will conduct the interview with them. We seen that uh, many volunteers they apply for this hotline service is they had a very good intention to serve and however um, me and another interviewer after discussion uh, uh, with the application it seems seems that uh, we discovered uh, two main issues that is very important for us to consider if accepting their application as the volunteer for this hotline service. Uh, one is that uh, uh, some of them not really uh, can, um, some of them not really understand some teachings of Catholic Church about family. For example, um, the, the idea about the natural family planning or the abortion or cohabitation, they are not really uh, understand really in depth or the true meaning of that. Yes, so that make us really hesitate whether we receive it because when the people calling the hotline, they want to ask the church about the marriage problem, we cannot answer wrong, wrongly wrong. Yeah, so we need to really take very care of it. Uh, and another issue is that. Uh, we found that some of them, although they are very have a good intention to help others, but seems um, mm, with the communication, the listening, or uh, the the way of expression, we found that this is not so not, not, not so perfect. Ah, uh, yeah, because there's some problems there. But finally, we still make a decision that we nearly accept about 90% of the applicants. We still want to accept them to enroll for the training uh, because we have uh, idea that um, they had a very good intention. So we would like to provide an opportunity that we believe that maybe after the training, they would um, have more understanding about the teaching of church, uh, about some Catholic value of marriage and family. Also, we think that the training may be an opportunity for them to know how to listen to others, to communicate with others. So we still would like to recruit or allow them. We don't want to reject them because they really had the intention to help for the good of the others. And 
also we are not the one uh, we don't want to be the one to stop them to help others so we still uh, although uh, finally we will also arrange an examination after the training course uh, to ensure the quality uh, but we would like to open up to them from this experience I would like to share is that um, it's also refreshing for me sometimes maybe we expect uh, we expect um, a perfect person to be the helper but but I think in many cases um, we are just like in in the marriage it is a progress we also believe uh, brothers and sisters are in the progress of learning so we finally accept all of that about all of their application and would like to have the opportunities that learn from each other and then after the next step uh, we will have an examination and by that time to uh, to uh, to pick up those volunteers suitable for the service yes just a little bit sharing about it. Are there any questions? No, I just want to say um, I'm the witness of the Hong Kong church <laughs> because I come from Hong Kong now. I'm, I'm not mentioned about it. I come from Hong Kong. I'm born in Hong Kong. And I'm come, uh, it's just like uh, Andonia. I come to Taiwan for 30 years, um, 32 years around. <laughs> so um, when I, I'm baptized too. I'm baptized in, in, in Taiwan, but I'm grown up in Catholic schools. That's why. It's very um, common in, in Hong Kong that we are come from a different religion, but and the, attached to the uh, school with the priests and the religious sisters, we feel the love of God. Well, and when we have the choice, we would like to become a Catholic instead of a, others. That's why. And I, I want to be a witness to the Hong Kong church because after we married and we have children, then we came back to Hong Kong for vac vacation. I come to my parish and find that it's just elders paying the rosary, a few uh, elders in the 80s. Oh, I see, wow, it's a very um, downing uh, church, parish. But afterwards, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that I'm, oh yes, I have the, the marriage and, and I have my home in, in, Hong, in, in Taipei. Because I'll, I'm uh, surrounded by the priests, the, the religious, and all sorts of um, activities at that moment. Afterwards, when I came back uh, at uh, about 2000, the parish changed, changed a lot. There's youth and the choir, and there's children all around in the daily mass. And this Easter, I joined the Eve of uh, the Easter Mass with my father, who is cut, who is baptized at this that evening. My father is 87 years old, and the Mass is opened at about 8 o'clock, but when I come at 6:30, there's a crowd of people waiting to, to attend the Mass. It's marvelous. And in that evening, there are 67 to be baptized in the Mass. What is the glorious um, achievement of Hong Kong Church? I'm the witness. And I know what is inside because they have a very basic education on the lay people 
in the past 25 years. They have all the lessons, all the um, activities, all the educational programs for the couples, and they have their marriage encounter we can with the help of us from Taiwan. So, and I also know there's a school for fathers in Korean, the, in the Korean church. I very, I, I'm very, I'm dedicated to hope that we will meet in this meeting because I heard it uh, years before. They have the schools for fathers and husbands in the church. They've developed a, a program, a yearly program for the fathers. I know that's the absence of fatherhood in Asian. And that brings the problem of homosexuality. This is the base, the root of the problem. Because the absence of father in, in our homes. They have no models. And nowadays, the work time, the working time, and the style of work is unknown to the children. They have no sense that how, why they, the fathers is so weak and tired to come home and bring the emotion to our, what, I, what we have to blame us, the children, why? And most of our children in, in Taiwan, in um, middle class, middle class families, I have a very sad stories. You know, the pictures of fathers is in frame. Why? Because they talk with their fathers in Skype. By Skype, through the Skype. They talk with their fathers for a few minutes in Skype, in frame. The fathers is in frame. It's a true story. And I hope the fatherhood in the household work is very important, especially in East Asian. And I know the fathers, they have the pressure to make more money instead of love in this culture. But we're women, we are waiting for our husband to share, to share our household work and to share their problem, their weakness in front of us. We are not afraid to see them crying. We are not afraid. Because it is true love. And um, as a mother of three children, um, I regard myself as the custodian of God's gift. We just the opener of our gifts. It's not my obsession. It's not my treasure. It's the God's gift. And I'm, I'm the mother to receive this gift from God and I'm going to recover discover the talent in this box, in this gift. So um, take the hands out of their education, but be the company as the mother at home. I'm the teacher, I'm the school teacher as a senior high school with the age of um, Trend, uh, trend 12 to 15. You know, there's a very 
crucified, crucified spirit in Newf. I'm with them 26 years, and I know the trend of the problem in Taiwan. So make sure that we are the parents, the first school of our children. We have to spend more quality time with them. For example, I, my third child, who, who is 12, he or she has to face her teacher, who is a gate. He, uh, he support the gay marriage with a badge on his backpacker to show that uh, he showed ev uh, many videos in class. So I have very intimate talks every night with my children to make sure she is kind and calm in the his, her class. This is the challenge. This is the challenge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we have heard when many challenges uh, in what Angela has said, but I think Antonio wanted to add a piece. You want to add something? Yes, as a father, it's very important, especially when uh, the father should not be action when our children is in the in the new new, just like the child in the high school. We find that a lot of people they action. That's why the children cannot get enough. How to say to know what what to be a what is the man? Who, that's why they are confused as the to be a. Finally, maybe they think they are uh, homo homogeneous, so homosexual. So this is very important, and I learned from Angela. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we've heard the, the challenges of parenting. Um, what I, I'd like to refer back to what uh, Bishop John Lee was talking about with the center for uh, young people where their parents are in jail or uh, drug addicted or whatever. Uh, many of us, in spite of many types of challenges, we do not have to face the type of destitution or um, deviations in life that really deprive us of the most fundamental way to be family. And so um, I just want to draw attention to the fact that one of the greatest challenges to good family life and meaningful lives, dignified lives, is poverty. So we have to pay attention to the most common sense aspects of family ministry. We need to see that many of our societies are extremely unequal. Some people have so much they don't even know how to do it. They need people to help them spend their money. Huh? We have all kinds of apps and businesses starting up now to help the rich use their money. And it's not good for their family life either. But we have at the other end of the spectrum uh, fathers and mothers who are anxious because they can't really provide the most basic things for their children. Even in East Asia, not only in South Asia or Southeast Asia where poverty is so rampant, but even in East Asia. And poverty has so many faces. So I'd like us when we are doing our planning later, not to forget 
the wide spectrum. Remember we said in our questions, what are the challenges that families face? All families, not only Catholic families, not only middle class families, rich families, poor families, single parent families, cohabiting families. It doesn't matter what kind of family, they are in our horizon, on our radar screens for ministry. We don't have to approve of their way of life, but we need to accompany them. So um, I'd like to open the floor for some discussion on family ministry, keeping in mind the framework that was given to us yesterday, keeping in mind the trends and influences mentioned by Prof. Tran, which is the modernity which has created love that is either too rational, functional, you are useful, therefore you, I love you, or a love that is so romantic and ideal that it is unattainable. How do we help in our ministry life to be lived in a more loving and meaningful way? So I'd like to ask the panel if they have some things to share, or any of you, if you have some questions in this matter, to we can grapple together. None of us have the answers, because all of us have some mind shift to make you know, with this invitation of Pope Francis. So is anyone daring to open the discussion? Can you speak to us on this? In my slide yesterday, I had three questions that I would like to ask the participants. And one of the questions, if I can remember correctly, is what is your deepest desire? What is your deepest desire for the family? If I know your deepest desire for the family, then I can use that as the starting point. Why do you want to work for family? Why do you want to work for the family ministry? What is your motivation? What is your hope? In other words, what is your deepest desire? Because God works in your deepest desire. And this is very Ignatian, you see. What drives you out of bed each morning? What gets you out of bed each morning? Why are you at work each day? Why do you come home to the family? What drives you? What gives you the, the desire, the passion for your life, for your family? And if I know that, then perhaps that is the starting point whereby we can work together, husband and wife, children and parents, not only for family of their own family, but family for mission. And we tend to forget that we are all missionary. We are all missionaries. We are called to evangelize. That's why I say we have that family, a mission, a living mission of love or hope for society. We cannot give what we do not have. And if you have given much by God in your family, how can you share that? with others, other family which are less fortunate than you. So the question comes back to this. What is your deepest desire for the family, for your family, for the family ministry, and for mission? Marriage and the family is open for the, to the new life. How do we establish, welcome every, any, everyone, this kind of group, uh, community in the parish. Welcome everybody. How can we establish this kind of community?
我可以用中文表达。Uh, can I speak、uh, in Chinese? <笑>呃，回应李主教的，呃，我们应该要陪伴。Responding to the、uh, Bishop Lee,、uh, how do we respond? How do we、uh, accompany? 呃，在陪伴中，我碰到了一个问题。In the process of accompanying people, I face、uh, one question. 我们有没有可能，呃？我不认同你，可是我可以同理你。In the process, even though I don't agree with you, but I can accompany you. 嗯，呃，呃，这个是一个我碰到的一个陪伴中的困困难。This is the difficulty in the process of company that I face. 我告诉，呃，有一次我们碰我。碰到了一位同性恋支持同性恋的朋友。One time I face a a person who support the gay marriage. 我们说我们的想法是，我爱罪人，我恨罪恶。Our thought is we love the sinners, but we hate the act of the the process. 那这句话。呃，伤了这个朋友。And this word, this sentence hurt the person. 为什么我们同性恋倾向的就是罪人呢 ？Why is the, in our tendency、um, towards the homosexual is a sinner? 为了这件事，我回去忏悔。For this reason, I went home and regret and confess. <笑>对，我们觉得没有错啊，哈、啊，我们接受。呃，这个罪人，可是我们不接受罪恶。I thought this wasn't wrong because we are we are accept the sinners, but we don't we disagree with the act. 对，那这个不，这个为什么我要忏悔 ？Why do I have to confess? 因为我把我跟你分开了。Because I separate you and I. 呃，不是我们。It's not we. 哎，所以，呃，我们常常是那个高举着我们的理想跟价值。How often, oftentimes we lift up our model and our high ideal and the value. 可是我们是高高在上的。We put ourselves in the pedestal. 我们认你认定你是低低在下的。So we look down on other people. 所以。我们没有办法结合一起。So we are not able to be together united. 有一次，我跟我的儿子说，婚姻应该是要呃两个人一起为主服侍。One time, I told my son, the marriage is a true couple together a service God. 可是我的孩子说，现在的年轻人。他们只是要亲密跟热情而已。For now, the young couples they just want to be warm, fuzzy feeling together and sweet. 他们没有责任。There's no responsibility. 更没有一起为主服侍的这样的概念。There's no thought of serving God together. 所以我发现，我们是高高在上的。他们是低低在下的。That's how I discover that we are in the high position in the pedestal, and yet we put down them in the low place. 所以我们没有办法跟他对话。And that's why we cannot dialogue together. 所以我就在想说，有没有可能我们不认同你 ？Is there a reason? Maybe this is the reason that we are not agree with each other. 可是我们可以同理你。But we can sympathize with them. 所以我，我我一直在想这个问题。I've been reflecting on these questions for a long time. 嗯、呃，在咨商的时候 ，In the counseling time， 呃，我们可能不认同那个个案的想法。We may not agree with the thought of the person. 
可是我们可以同理他， but we can empathize with them. 和他变成很好的朋友， and be a friend with them. 哎，甚至可以帮助他， and in, uh, move forward to help them. 那为什么我们在服务的陪伴的过程里面，却是变成你跟我？ And how come in the process the company then become a separation of you and I? 哎，而不是我们的。And it's not that we are together. 哎，这是我我一直在思考的问题。This has been thinking this issue and this topic. 哦，谢谢。We have a a very rough talk with my son. Um, he, when he is in the university studies, he is living with a, with a guy he, who is homosexual, and he is chasing for her love, for his love. This is the first time I talk with my son on this issue, how to face himself and to face her, his friend. And the last November, there's a very、um, conflict between the church and the youth on the issue of homosexuality because of the law making. And I have another talk with my son. And this time, after hours of talk. He come to a co conclusion that, oh, I ca I have a relief because my parents is not like other parents. <laughs> I thanks her, I thanks him, because I think we are on the same boat. We are on the same boat together in the family, but. This conflict in the church and in the news, in the in the Taiwan, make him lost his focus. So when he listened to our explanation and our enthusiasm with the homosexual marriage issue, he come to realize it's not the teaching. It's about love. It's about respect. But the definition of marriage in our church is different. He come to realize, and I thanks for this talk because we are more intimate in this issue. Right after, thank you. As we learn in、uh, theology seminary college for three years, of course we have very good answer about such difference. I think I also have uh, some uh, confused how to answer the young people when they talking about sexuality. But finally, in the, for the past few weeks, I have another solution for myself. Maybe I can have for your reference.、Uh, I don't just them themselves. I will, I will be a friend with this homo,、uh, the gay, and when they talking about this,、uh, my opinion, I said, I accept you as a human, just like Jesus, no matter what you did, what you do.、Uh, for about the the, the wrong sexual、uh, activity or sexual action,、uh, I will say that how about if you ask your consign, if the If the consign tell you you can do that, just go ahead. Conscience, 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 conscience. So it means that I don't need to just what he did or what he want to do. Okay, so let God. I believe God give him a conscience inside his heart. I don't know if you understand. 两就是我会让他那个他的良心去判断他自己。对还是错？如果他觉得他良心是对的，你继续做，我没有办法说服你，因为我不想跟你谈这个，因为不同的 opinion， this different opinion between 
to people. But I will let you to make the decision yourself. If you think what you are doing is right, just go ahead because I believe God will guide him, not us. We cannot guide them. Okay, I'm going to try to make some concluding noises here because uh, I know that we have um, only about eight minutes left and we can't run over time. Uh, it has been interesting, very deep sharing and uh, very inspiring uh, points raised. Uh, I want to thank all the panelists. I would like to respond to the gentleman who just shared about the uh, friend, the person who was homosexual and was offended. Uh, Pope Francis has invited us to find new language in the church, to speak to the world, to speak to people. If you tell someone who feels that it is their personal nature to be homosexual, and you treat them like a sick person, you cannot expect them to have a positive response. No? So, the invitation here is to find what is it the deepest desire of this person. It is for love. It is for life. Help them in their conscience to develop a way of reflecting on the meaning of life. All of us have to articulate for ourselves, as Father Charles explained, what gets us out of bed in the morning, besides the fact that the bell is ringing, you know? I mean, what makes us work every day? What brings us happiness? So if we can have this kind of discussion, rather than focus on the church doctrine, but you know the doctrine. You don't let go of it. And you can tell them what it is in a moment of trust and respect, you know, that they can continue the reflection. But love equals life. Huh? Professor Tran helped us to see that love is the actions that brings about a life that is full and flourishing. So we need to respect the grace that everyone is going to receive from God in their journey. And we are an instrument of that grace as people who accompany. So I think we can be very com confident that even if we don't have perfect knowledge, we don't have perfect emotions, uh, we can depend on God and journey with the people who are given to us or to whom we go out to reach. No? So now, um, would you like to make any last word of wisdom, Bishop? Last word of wisdom for anybody, everybody? We'll pray? Okay. So I think we could invite now ourselves to um, just spend a moment to Praise the Lord, bless the Lord. Do you know the Tese chant, uh, bless the Lord my soul? How does it go? Bless the Lord my soul. <laughs> <laughs>